Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. And in today's video, I'm really excited to be with you exploring the higher frequencies and the multidimensional possibilities of the new moon in Sagittarius on November 30th, 2024. And also a little bit about the upcoming Mercury retrograde, which is starting before our new moon. It's starting on November 25th, and will be an energy that we are working with through December. So let's get into it. Thank you so much for being together with me for this video. Before we dive into the astrology, I would like to invite you to an upcoming class, the final class I'm teaching this year. It is Astrology Basics with Reiki, Introduction to the Moon. So looking at the moon, getting to know our moons, diving into the astrology of the natal moon, so the moon by sign and by house placement and by lunar phase in your birth chart, what that means for you, and really coming together in sacred circle. We will do a Reiki journey where we connect with each of our moons together and this will be a live class. It will be recorded and there will be a private group. So definitely, if you're interested in exploring your moon in a really supportive, sacred circle environment, then learn more about the class. Register if you feel so called at taylornorrisreiki.com. And it is something, it is a class where you can join if you have very little or no Reiki experience or astrology experience, or if you do have more Reiki or astrology knowledge or experience. So all levels are very much welcome and beginners are very much welcome as well. So I'm excited to see you there for those of you who will become our divinely ordered circle. All right. So as I said, on November 30th, in the final hours of November 30th, there is a new moon at nine degrees Sagittarius, 32 minutes, and that will be occurring on December 1st in most locations. But as Hawaii is in a latter time zone, it's actually occurring on November 30th. And I forgot to mention too, on November 30th, I will be hosting a free distant Reiki share for this new moon. So you are very welcome to attend that and learn about that RSVP for free for that event on my website, Taylor Norris Reiki. We'll look at the astrology for the next two weeks, and we will also do a Reiki journey for the new moon and for the entire Sagittarius moon cycle. So a few days prior to our new moon, I've included a chart here where you can see the breakdown of the Mercury retrograde that we are really in through the end of the year as Mercury entered its shadow zone on November 7th at 6 degrees 23 minutes. It will station retrograde on November 25th at 22 degrees in 40 minutes Sagittarius. So you want to look where is 6 to 23 degrees of Sagittarius in your birth chart. And this will be where Mercury will really be guiding your focus. And guess what? You know, what have you really been focused on since November 7th? It's likely that same area, that same sphere of your life will be very activated and very much receptive to 
insights and downloads and awarenesses and reflection and healing of different storylines and higher awarenesses, expanded thinking, expanded mindset, shedding, letting go of conditioning, of programming, of thought forms, belief systems, ways of communicating, ways of self-talk that no longer serve your highest good. And what's also very unique about this particular Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius is that Jupiter is the guiding planet for Sagittarius zodiac sign. Mercury is the guiding planet for Gemini zodiac sign. And what we have is the two guides in each other's signs, and this is called mutual reception. So there's a sense of Mercury and Jupiter very much working together, very much co-creating with one another to help us expand our minds in really the most innovative, multi-galactic, multi-dimensional, new paradigm, higher awareness kinds of ways. And this is very exciting. As I said, that's a process that we are already in, we've already been in, and you can even see at the time of the new moon that Mercury has stationed retrograde in Sagittarius and it is opposing Jupiter at 17 degrees, nine minutes of Gemini. So the two are working together in these opposite signs, in these opposite energies, in each other's energies. And it's like our lower minds are being programmed with our higher minds. Our higher minds are being programmed into our lower minds with the facts and the figures and the details and the storylines. And this can be a really productive time of shedding what no longer serves our mental bodies and coming into a deeper sense of embodied truth and our ability to communicate that truth. So that is a little bit about what we're looking forward to. There is some information too I'd like to share with you a little later on about what I was receiving about both the Mercury retrograde and the new moon and the new moon being conjunct in Taurus and just like what it all means. I was reflecting on that in a Reiki journey I did just before starting this recording. So We'll talk a bit more about that, but just to give you a few more of these specifics and details, Mercury things, Gemini things. So November 25th, Mercury stations retrograde, appearing to move backwards from our perspective here on Earth. So that mercurial energy, that communication and truth energy, that forward moving energy is now being directed inward. And you may want to notice too, is Mercury direct or retrograde in your birth chart? If it is retrograde, this may be feeling like a really natural and flowy period for you, a very exceptionally rich period for you where you may actually feel more forward momentum and more outward going energy. So just something to pay attention to. So November 25th to December 15th, that is when Mercury is retrograde. And so December 15th, it will station direct at six degrees, 23 minutes, and then go back forward through the middle degrees of Sagittarius and be passing through its shadow period on January 2nd. So it will be on to new territory after the year turns from 2024 to 2025. It's like we start January 2nd. Okay, our minds have been rebooted, reintegrated, higher self, higher truth insights downloaded into the lower mind, mental body cleared so that that 2025, we can really start with a clean slate 
and move forward with a lot of powerful mental bandwidth, it feels like, which will be really helpful because at the same time, Mars will actually be retrograde. I'll talk about that more at the new moon distant Reiki share on November 30th. We will cover that in depth at that event. So I hope you will join us there live or in the recording, which I'll post to this YouTube channel. So very exciting Mercury retrograde. Now changing our focus to the Sagittarius new moon. This is, as I said, a Jupiter ruled zodiac sign. You can kind of tune into this color that I link through the color wheel to Sagittarius zodiac sign, this beautiful blue. You could think of kind of like the higher chakras being involved with Sagittarius zodiac sign, particularly like the throat and the third eye. And really, this is a sign of optimism, of expansion, of travel, of multidimensional experience, of spiritual exploration, of spiritual belief systems and belief systems in general. So those thoughts and thought forms that have actually constructed particular geometries of infrastructure within our mental bodies, some supportive, some created from ancient wisdom, some created from the enlightened and healed parts of our souls and spirits, the purity of our spirits, and some perhaps also very much created by the culture, by society, by it being this particular time in human history on earth where we were raised, our background, our religion, our spiritual beliefs and spiritual traditions, all of that. So more of a conditioned belief system versus something that's really like, no, this is true for me at the level of my soul, at the level and the purity and the sanctity of my spirit. So with it being a new moon, it's like we have a chance for a new beginning, cleaning and clearing that slate of that which is conditioned, our conditioned belief system in any area of our life, but particularly in the areas where the Sagittarius zodiac sign is in your chart, where Mercury will be transiting, where this new moon will be occurring. And also in the Gemini area of your chart where Jupiter, the guiding planet for Sagittarius, is traveling through your chart at this time. So really those two opposite houses are being very activated. Those two opposite life areas are being very activated for each of us in uniquely healing and supportive ways. And if you know what those areas are, you can intend to co-create with these energies, to co-create with Mercury and to co-create with Jupiter in what is your next level new beginning as regards your mental body, as regards the expansion of your mental horizons, your learning, your teaching, your publishing, your writing, your speaking, your light language, your communications, your mediumship, your channeling, however that works for you, your receptivity to downloads and your willingness to perhaps share those downloads and that wisdom, even if it's just for you, maybe it's for one other person, maybe it's for a group of people, maybe it's for a wider audience of people. But this can be a very powerful time of igniting you on your path of truth and igniting you on your path of intuition and intuitive development. So incredibly exciting here. And you can see Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius is actually making a trine to Chiron retrograde in Aries. So this can be very fiery, very passionate, a sense of newness and a sense of deep healing and instruction 
of how you can embody more of your inner teacher, more of your inner guide, more of your inner mentor energy, mastery energy, soul mastery energy as well here. So incredibly exciting, incredibly supportive. And we can also see that the north node of the moon at four degrees Aries, 27 minutes coming into closer and closer conjunction with Neptune retrograde, but is also making a trine to this new moon. This new moon is trying the North Node. So there's a sense of you could be having downloads about your individual and collective destiny and purpose and next steps for soul growth and activation and soul aligned action, soul aligned leadership, soul aligned knowledge and wisdom and perhaps these are new ventures. You're being guided to take new courses of study. You're being guided to take or create, allow to move you or move through you. So incredibly empowering, fiery, ignition lighting. And perhaps at this time, you are not yet starting those new courses of action but you are getting the downloads and the details and the insights around what those are. And it's something you're going to be creating or it's adventures you're going to be embarking upon in the new year, in the months to come. So just being very open to that, being very clear and trusting Neptune with the divine timing of that, that there is no hurry in the sense of hurry or urgency that doesn't feel authentic or aligned or isn't being supportive to just let go of that, trust your divine timing and understand it might be now, there might be flow, there might be windows of opportunity, it might be swift and easy and you see, okay, it is now. So just being very open that it's not one size fits all for everybody. Mercury retrograde, in my view, is not like across the board, we can say, you know, don't start anything new, or it's going to be slow, or it's going to be challenged. That may be some people's experience, but it might not be your experience. It might be that it is your time and things are flowing and they're moving quickly. So just to, that's part of the deconditioning and the decluttering and the really what I see as Pluto and Aquarius's invitation for us to let go of any limitations we are putting on the possibilities and potentialities for ourselves and for our soul growth and even for our communities, for these humanitarian visions and higher ideals that so many of us are so ready for and so ready to take direct aligned action with those. So if you're moving slow, move slow. If you're moving more quickly, move more quickly. And as that oscillates and changes, please just give yourself lots of grace with that and listen to yourself, listen to your body, listen to how much rest you may be needing, how much meditation time you may be needing, how much self-care you may be needing. And do your best to adjust accordingly and give yourself what you need and to support others in what they need as well. So zooming in on the actual physical body and medical astrology, according to Judith Hill and her research and work, Sagittarius rules in the body, the sciatic nerve, the hips, the thighs, the cossacks with Scorpio, so the base of the spine, the tailbone, and the spinal cord with Leo zodiac sign. I know I've been noticing quite a lot lately 
Now, I do have a lot of placements in Leo, but my spine feels like it is really being hollowed out and going through some very profound changes at this time. So if you're having profound changes or sensations, please share anything you want to share in the comments below this video. I'd love to know how this is physically integrating in your body and also know that any changes in your body could be due to any number of transits, the Pluto and Aquarius energies. That's a whole new nervous system realignment, reintegration that we are all very much in. I would say even the Jupiter retrograde in Gemini is really expanding that whole nervous system realignment, all the solar flares, the changes in the magnetic field of the earth, the solar winds we're receiving, all of this cosmic intelligence and the intelligence and changes emanating from the earth and these weather systems and larger natural forces that we just, I mean, it's like on all sides you could possibly look at. We are onboarding so much of the new and so much of our inner activation of our soul and our spirit, our multidimensional self that there can be physical symptoms. And I just want to like highlight that and normalize that. And again, allow it to be an invitation to listen to your body more and take really good care of your physical body and of your energy system in any ways you may be guided to do so. Knowing that Mercury can help guide you in the ways that are aligned for your highest good at this time as well. So when we look at the galactic energies of this new moon, this is a chart that you can make for free, galacticastrochart.com. You can get the wheel with the stars, I believe, in the free version, though I'm not sure as I'm saying that. But I know you can get a table like this with certain star alignments. It might not have as many as you can see here, but you can see some of the star alignments with your own natal birth chart. If you've not already explored that, I highly recommend you explore that resource there for you. The sun and the moon will be conjunct one of our royal stars, royal star Antares, the guardian of the West, connected to beautiful Archangel Uriel. So this is a wonderful time to tune into the fire element and to tune in to the light and the higher frequencies of Archangel Uriel and the light and the higher frequencies of Antares, this super massive beautiful star that is a stargate, that is a portal to so many other different worlds and so many other different star systems. It's a part of Scorpius constellation. And this new moon is also making a conjunction with the great attractor, one of the black holes that we study in galactic astrology that's even beyond what a black hole is. It's a cosmic anomaly, so it could be many different black holes together. It is this exceptionally powerful force of cosmic creative energy and the origin of a large swath of our universe that is also drawing in that which it organizes, that which it has co-created back in towards it. So all of these black holes, the great attractor very much included as a source consciousness, as a creation consciousness. 
and of the black holes that we really focus on in galactic astrology, including the galactic center at the Milky Way galaxy center, that black hole that organizes our galaxy, the super galactic center, one octave higher that organizes our Milky Way in 30 other galaxies in orbit around it. This great attractor is like a third octave out, an octave even higher, higher dimensional consciousness, multi-galactic consciousness, connecting us to even more of the known and the unknown universe. So these are monumental and massive new beginnings here is what this Antares royal star alignment is showing us. The great attractor star alignment is really showing us and Jupiter being opposite Mercury at this time too really feels like and widely opposite the new moon itself feels like it is really expanding all of this information, all of this multidimensional possibility. Jupiter conjunct Regal, and that is a tight conjunction here you can see at only two minutes. So it's a partile conjunction. Those of you who took my aspect class last month or earlier this month will know that the partile conjunction is occurring in the same degree. 17, 11 minutes is the degree of the zodiac for Regal star and Jupiter at 17 degrees, nine minutes. This is very close. Our protection planet, Jupiter, conjunct this protection star regal in the foot of the pharaoh the foot of god in the sky the foot of orion connected to osiris connected to this great benevolent god of civilization of ancient egypt of ancient lemuria so this is where again we have that resonance and could have quite a lot of soul memories and soul experiences connected to Atlantean times and connected to Lemurian times and time periods and incarnational experiences. Our souls remember from those times coming into greater consciousness, awareness, and who we were then, who we are now, who we are in future timelines connected to Atlantis and Lemuria and ancient Egypt, who we are in more of our multidimensional self. The alignments with Antares and the Great Attractor really, really suggesting that, really, really highlighting that. And I think this is where I will segue into some of the information I was really connecting with and reflecting on as I was in a Reiki journey state prior to starting this recording. And I was thinking about trans mediumship and trans channeling and these ways that gifted people are able to step back and let a higher consciousness channel through them, whether it's their higher self, a Pleiadian higher self, an archangel, a collective of beings, their guides, the ascended masters, the animal kingdom, particular individuals and leaders, Jesus, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene. I mean, so many examples of beings that are channeled by these really gifted and talented channelers. And I know trans mediumship is something that I've been really interested in these last years and wanting to explore and then kind of forgetting about it again and being like, no, I like my form of channeling. That really feels right for me. And it, I keep going back and forth with it. So I'm definitely not settled in true Gemini form. <laughs> I keep considering it and unconsidering it and having new revelations. And I was reminded again by Reiki that I am a channel for Reiki. <laughs> And that I'm a channel for my higher self. 
I'm a channel for all of myself. And in being a channel for the wholeness of myself, the wholeness of my multidimensional self, the wholeness of my multigalactic self, like how incredibly expansive that is alone without even trying to narrow it down to being a channel for a Pleiadian being or, you know, a group of guides. I mean, the amount of soul experiences any one of us has when we account for our true multidimensional nature, our true multigalactic nature, that that could well include archangels. That could well include collectives of angels that we are a part of at different times and locations in our soul's history. That that could include different councils of light beings in Antares or in Andromeda Galaxy or in the Pleiades, or in Royal Star Fomohau, or in Ancient Lyra, or in Future Lyra, or in Cetus Constellation, or connected to some of the dwarf planets, the Kuiper Belt objects, or connected to the galactic center, the super galactic center, Shapley Attractor. I mean, it is... Whoa, like expanding out. So that was one of the awarenesses I was having in this Reiki journey. And I was also having the awareness of how much I want to take myself out of the equation. (laughs) And why do I want to do that so badly? Like that is part of my own healing with Reiki energy is like, Well, if you're not channeling Taylor and Taylor's higher self and Taylor's multidimensional self and multigalactic self, who do you think is? So to understand the power of our own presence and the specific need of incarnating each and every individual one of us on earth at this time, that maybe it really is like actually your voice and your role and your perspective and the piece of the puzzle or the the flow, the, the part of the stream of consciousness that you uniquely and only you can offer and the value of that And what I think this is also connecting to is all of the conditioning and the wounding around, and and I know this is part of my soul's experience, like you need to kill the ego or experience the ego death or get rid of the ego, eliminate the ego, all of this. And I know I've had memory of particular lifetimes where that's been a focus. And even during my nodal reversal earlier in this lifetime, in my late 20s, we all have a nodal reversal right before our first Saturn return. Wow, that's a double whammy. And I was studying very deeply. I mean, I took monastic vows in a very shamanic sect of Tibetan Buddhism And so much of the teachings were with it kind of in that line of thought with the ego and the ego death. And I know that was even a part of different kind of like plant medicine circles and meditation circles that maybe I wasn't fully a part of, but it was kind of on the periphery of, you know, my consciousness and my soul's experience that that is part of that trauma and belief system around the ego must die and like I must be taken out of the equation somehow and like get better and better at doing that and that that it seems was part of my motivation for wanting to trans channel was like to get rid of myself more and like I'm not saying that that's the case for all trans channels, but I was looking into that more deeply. So 
in my new belief system I'm creating with Reiki and Holy Fire Reiki and the healing work I'm doing, the way I'm working with the galactic astrology too, is to actually be healing the ego, revealing the healed ego, tapping into those higher states of consciousness where the ego is healed and it's unified with the true nature, the purity of our soul and spirit, the purity of my spirit and allowing the purity of my spirit to flow through and channel through my ego because it's my understanding that as long as I have a physical body on earth and I'm in incarnated as a physical earth human, I do need the resourcefulness and the infrastructure of an ego and so to heal that to the fullest extent possible and keep saying yes to healing that is a really healthy thing to be doing. And I'm realizing here that so much of this Mars and Leo energy, ding, 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 that that could certainly be a part of why this is highlighting so powerfully because Mars at the time of this new moon about to station retrograde at five degrees 57 minutes of Leo zodiac sign is in trine to this new moon it is a separating trine the new moon is making a separating trine from Mars it's also the waxing trine to Mars. So there is this potential deep healing of our relationship with our ego, a new beginning as regards to what is a healed ego and how can we receive motivation and more soulfully and creatively express that which is an authentic and true part of our healed ego. And that this is really also receiving the support of the Antarian frequency, this star of fame, this star of opportunity, this star of multidimensional you know, success and glory and strategy and organizational abilities and being a stargate for ourselves and for others to remember ourselves in all of this and to remember ourselves in alignment with our souls in alignment with love self-love here self-love emanating resonating through our mental bodies our physical bodies and to allow that to permeate all aspects of your being because also I'm seeing this Mars during its retrograde period will this will happen looks like probably more in January but it will be moving towards a trine with Neptune and Pisces when it retrogrades back into Cancer so there's so much healing healthy ego softening and letting go and releasing, but all of that is making space for the healed and the healthy ego moving forward that will help us be and embody more of our authentic leadership and more of our co-creative power moving forward. So let me know in the comments your thoughts on all of this. There's so many beautiful star alignments to explore at the time of this new moon. So I'm really excited at the Reiki share to do a Reiki journey with all of you and see which ones may be highlighting. I know just looking at this list, obviously Antares, Great Attractor, Super Galactic Center, these are all really highlighting the Libra Ring Nebula is really highlighting. Regal, the Orion Star is really highlight. I mean, these are all just such incredibly beautiful, powerful stars. So maybe different for each of us. Let me know of these stars and maybe any others you're tuning into. What's really drawing you in about the 
star alignments and the star frequencies, the black holes with this lunation. I'm very curious to know. All right. So as usual, I pulled a card for the highest guidance for each of us who are watching, each of you who are watching this video from the Galactic Heritage card deck this time by Lisa Royal Holt. And the card that came through was this Lyra Civilization Past Era, number 11, so magical 11, in our 11th month of the year, pioneering spirit, pioneering spirit. And I love this artwork of the being that's holding, seems to be holding some kind of fire. There's this sense of fiery energy here. And there's also this almost looks like a sense of uh, very watery energy, the inquisitiveness of the eyes here, the open eye seeing from a new perspective, daring to charge into the future, but also perhaps needing to let go some of the heavy emotions of the past here as well. In the early Lyran civilization, they were all about exploration and conquest and exploring new worlds. This Lyra civilization very connected to the origin of human consciousness and humanoid bodies and structures within the Milky Way galaxy. So this is a time too, it's kind of linking in with the alignments to the nodal axis with our super galactic center to we're really connecting with the ancestors in a very powerful way at this time. Not only our ancestors of the earth, but our ancestors within the galaxy. We are healing. We are next leveling. We are opening ourselves to receive even more of their support, our support, our connection to them, more of that awareness that they are us and we are them. And we can tap into all of the different timelines that we are connected to through them, that they are connected to, and the ancient Lyran timelines I've really been enjoying connecting with are the ones where they have moved beyond the Milky Way galaxy, that they have moved through the Lyra Ring Nebula, which is a white dwarf that has since become a white hole and has enabled these groups to travel beyond the Milky Way galaxy. And in my view as well, travel beyond the known universe as well to other universes potentially too. That this can this is a very, very expansive energy to tap into. And I know I've had to be a little gentler and slower with my own energy body in tapping into it because it is a lot and it is powerful. So it almost seems like we are potentially sipping in at the fountain of this new energy frequency of this white hole frequency energy that was coming in really strongly with Pluto and Aquarius. I became very, very aware of that, that we are certainly receiving now at this new moon. And to also allow yourself to tap into your leadership, your inspiration, your passion, your desire to explore, the desire to expand your comfort zone, the directives coming through your soul, the directives coming through your spirit to very much be listening what those directives may be, be open to your divine timing with actually making them more of a reality, co-creating with those directives with your highest timeline, but that this can be a very, very inspiring energy. This is making me think also of like that Chiron and Aries and North Node of the Moon in Aries and the take charge and go your own way and allow yourself to really tap into greater de degrees of sovereignty, 
of spiritual exploration too with this whole Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius journeying, whether that's physically, you know, visiting other locations or whether it's more of a spiritual journey, shamanic Reiki journey, regression through your meditations, through your dreams as well. There's so many different ways to engage this. You can connect with me more deeply through my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. Come to the free Distant Reiki Share on November 30th. Come to the December 7th Astrology Basics with Reiki class all about the moon, the intuition, the divine mother, connecting with your moon, which is really, I'm understanding, a very timely class to be teaching prior to Mars retrograde, which Mars, so much of its retrograde cycle will be in the zodiac sign of Cancer. So very timely time to connect in with the moon as the moon is the guiding luminary for Cancer zodiac sign. The bookings for early 2025 have been opened on my website. So if you know you want a reading or a Reiki session or a Reiki journey with me, a one-on-one experience, you can check my calendar and see what's available and go ahead and start signing up for those as you're guided to do so. I'm wishing you the most beautiful, expansive, divinely ordered, synchronistic, magical, miraculous, Sagittarius new moon and Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius possible for you and your highest good. So much love. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.